All right, tonight we are going to be having um, barbecue chicken and french fries. A very easy to make meal again. And I'm going to be using some, I have two russet potatoes here and then a bunch of, no, 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 no. a bunch of uh, yellow potatoes. You want to choose the kind of bigger potatoes for french fries. Little round ones still make okay fries, but you want kind of bigger ones like this. And these are organic. Again, we try to get organic whenever we can. Organic yellow potatoes there. And um, something that's kind of interesting, you can come on in this way, I'll show you. This is our running water, isn't it? High tech. Yes. Um, and you just take a brush and you just want to make sure you get all the dirt off of them. I mean, we got to do it here. We got to shut the water off after each time. Excuse me. I'll just stick them over here on the cutting board. But uh, a thing that you need to think about when you uh, are looking at potatoes, back up a little bit, is um, I actually saw a thing the one time about different types of food that are GMO. The thinner the skin, the more danger there is from a GMO uh, fruit or vegetable. So obviously there's not much of a skin on a potato, so that's why it's better to get organic ones. Um, some things like a thicker skin, like a banana, it's not quite as, as dangerous, you know, with the pesticides and whatever else. Um, so, but potatoes, you really should try to get organic um, if you can. So, I'm gonna finish cleaning these up and we'll be right back. All right, got the potatoes all washed and uh, now we're gonna actually slice them into french fries. So if you want to come on in here, I'll show you. You're going to go with about half inch thick slices like that. Come in here, come this way, and you want to kind of come down in, don't cut your hand off, like that. There's other ways that you can do this, it's probably safer, but who needs safety? It's more fun to live dangerously, huh? Okay, now you got your, your different little thin slices like that. So what you want to do is just come in here and just you know, just slice them thin like this. Okay, that's pretty decent. That'll still cook up just fine. Then you can take them, stick them over in a bowl. A little bit of uh, like rot right there, you can just cut that right off. Not a big deal. You can go into the compost bin. It's pretty easy. You know, they sell all kinds of appliances and things like that, that little special deals that you can save time cutting french fries and whatever we've never bothered with any of that stuff just have a good sharp knife and um, you're able to just slice them real nice and thin like that flip them across onto the stove yep that's really good don't laugh at that that's not funny man i'm not professional now i guess huh so cut that end off And there you go, like that. There's your french fries. You can just go ahead and eat one. Just No, I'm just kidding, you gotta fry them first. Dad. So I'm gonna finish slicing up all these potatoes here. And then we'll get to the chicken and the onion and all the other good stuff. We'll be right back. All right, we're just about done here. This french fries. And you wanna kinda, when you, when you put them in your bowl over here, get them ready to put into the frying oil. You kind of want to separate them a little bit. If you just leave them, I'll show you what I mean here. If you just kind of leave them clumped like this together, they go into the fryer and then a lot of times they don't actually come apart and then they don't really fry all that well. So, one more to do here. And you know, a lot of people would say, well you shouldn't do yellow potatoes or you shouldn't do reds or, I mean we're in Aroostook County, Maine here. This is like, at one point in time, this was the biggest potato growing area in the entire country, maybe even in one in the world, I don't know. But uh, Canada, there's competition came in from Canada, and then Idaho kind of really took over. And now there's still a lot of potatoes you know, being grown up here, but not near what it once was. Um, but So there's a lot of different varieties of potatoes that we're aware of. I'm not ready to do the onion yet. But, so you can see the difference there between Here's the yellow ones, here's the russets right there. 
And you know, again, a lot of people will say, well, you should soak them in ice water to get rid of a lot of the starch and whatever else. They come out better and all this stuff. <laughs> we really don't bother. We don't take the skin off. We like to cook them with the skin right on. Um, so I'm going to show you more about that. Now we're going to get started. Um, first of all, on the uh, barbecue chicken. And what we're going to do here is our infamous bacon grease. We like to make a lot of bacon, so we always have a lot of grease left over. And you want to take a good scoop of that and just put it there. Take the amazing high-tech fork holding apparatus, there, yeah, clothespin, um, <laughs> and uh, get it in there. And you want to turn it to about number five or so. Melt that uh, bacon grease. And then we're going to get some chicken. This is. I threw out the wrapper because we actually used the other half of this was last night with the garlic chicken but it's just regular like chicken tenders essentially and these are you know um, again uh, antibiotic free meat I forget what the the, the uh, farm was it's kind of a local thing or whatever here and uh, they sell it at the grocery store real good stuff I again I know a lot of places you can't really get the uh, antibiotic free meat um, well, we were really shocked actually when we went on our trip to Iowa, then to West Virginia, then to Pennsylvania. Uh, Iowa had some chicken like this, antibiotic free. Pennsylvania had, I think, none. I mean, it was pretty bad. I think they had a, no, because we brought it from Iowa, that's what it was. Right. But it, in different parts of the country, it's hard to get antibiotic free meat. Um, but maybe you can check with local farms and whatever else. But uh, we're going to take this. First, we're going to heat that up. And we're going to get this bacon grease melted in there. Then we're going to cut these up a little bit. I found that if you cook big pieces of meat on your stove top, um, a lot of times the seasoning isn't getting in towards the inside and sometimes you'll have issues if it's not really cooked all that, all that uh, thoroughly. But with cutting it into cubes, you get a lot better seasoning on your meat and it cooks a lot more evenly. It doesn't take as long to cook and um, tastes better. So we'll be right back. All right, as you can see, the bacon grease is now all melted. It's all liquefied there. So this is a very, very secret thing here. Now we have to remove the fork holding apparatus, technical device here, whatever. Wow, okay, back up on the holder there. Of course, we'll use the fork later on to eat with. Now what we wanna do is, we wanna get our chicken ready. So just take your chicken out like that. You can do it individually. Or if you're impatient like I am, you can just cut them all up at, at uh, the same time. Watch your fingers, of course. Uh, we're trying to avoid blood here and uh, don't really want to eat my fingers. So there you go, like that. And just take it all, stick it in here. Of course, we'll be sanitizing this cutting board a little bit here. But uh, very, very important. Just wash my hands off quick. And get the chicken juices off of your hands. Okay, now it's very important at this stage you want to make sure that you get these things coated good in bacon grease. Okay, you do not want to just let them sit there because you can see what happens is they'll stick. Okay, like that. And it's funny too because if you look here, all the bacon grease is pulled up down here at this side. It's because our floors are so uneven. <laughs> I, I have adjusted this stove so many times trying to lift the front end up. Uh, yeah. And depending on the season, the time of the year, our floors get more or less crooked and, and off level. So you're going to love that. The joys of living in a house, old house in a, a northern environment, I guess. When the ground heaves and things. The winter freeze and the spring thaw. But basically you're just trying to get these things all covered in grease like that. Again, you can use olive oil or, you know, I wouldn't use butter for this, but well, I guess you could, but I usually try to stick with bacon grease because it's, it's just real good for cooking meat with it. And while that's cooking up, what you want to do now is you want to come over here and cut this onion, get the end cut off and then this side cut off like that. And then come in here and you just kind of slice it like that and then you got to peel off a layer here 
usually these outer layers are pretty rough. Sometimes they're not too bad, but uh, they'll get kind of beat up and whatever else. But you just want to kind of tear that outer layer off. So there you go. Got a nice clean looking onion. And again, what you need to do, like the potatoes, you need to just slice it in about similar thickness there, about a three-eighths of an inch to a half inch thick, maybe quarter inch. Come in here like this. Don't poke yourself in the hand. Like that. Like this. And like that. You see? And then you can either do it just all one like this. You got to make sure that you keep this stirring around there. What you're looking for is you're looking for kind of that little bit of a browned edge on it there. You don't want to overcook this stuff. Now to really throw a interesting thing in here before I cut up the onion, here we have a deep frying thermometer. This is an old one. It's got to be old, you know, when it's made in the USA, like that. This is from the 1960s, I believe, the old one we found on eBay. And um, this thing here, you plop it into here. If you want to look in this right here, we have, you say, what in the world is that? That is coconut oil after it's been heated up and then cooled down. So I'll show you that in just a minute, but you want to turn it to high and then this will melt down. It'll liquefy, I shouldn't say melt down, but it'll liquefy and you want to warm it up to about 375 degrees right there. And then it's ready to fry. So coming back here, make sure you keep this stuff stirred so that they don't stick to your pan. And I did actually take the heat up a little bit. I was a little sneaky. You didn't see me doing it here, but I took it up to between six and seven right there. So that's about where you want to uh, just fry these, this chicken. Okay, now what you do here, you can you know, slice these or whatever, or dice them or whatever. They already are sliced, I guess. But I just like to have it like that, and I come in here and do a, a quarter it like that, and that's pretty much good. I don't do much more than that. Drop it in there. There you go. And that's done. Set your cutting board and your knife over here to be washed. You're going to wash it in hot scalding uh, water to, to make sure that all that, any kind of bacteria or whatever there from the chicken is dead. Again, you take your scraps from your onion, get them in your little compost thing here. These are really neat. We just had an old, you know, like yogurt container for a while. And the thing is, that thing would stink so bad, you take the lid off, it's terrible. But this has a charcoal filter in it, and actually on the top there, so it does vent a little bit, but you can't smell anything. It's really good. Um, highly recommend them things. But uh, again, you're just stirring this up. And you, you want to you keep some, a little bit of liquid in here. You don't want it going totally dry. And I don't mean water, okay, I'm talking the the onion, as it as it uh, starts to cook a little bit, it'll release some of its moisture. Do not, put, do not put salt in at this point in time, because salt will dry everything out. So you want to keep the salt out of it at this point. Um, but you just want to get these so that these are nice and soft, these onions. And they will break apart, you don't have to worry about taking each ring apart before you put it in here. They will break apart, so again, you're just stirring it. And I don't stir this way. I, I actually use it upside down like that, is how I do it. I just kind of stir like this. With, uh, yeah, I'm going to have you help here in just a minute, son. Oliver's chomping at the bit over here. He wants to get in on the cooking action. He's quite the uh, little chef's helper. So I'll get this stuff out of here. Go ahead and set your pestle up there. Alright, I need to get the olive oil. I'm going to film it this way. Here he comes. Chef in training. Yep, he knows what to get. So we're not quite ready for the olive oil yet. Um, a little word about olive oil. If you want to back up a little bit so you can see everything here. Olive oil is another thing, unfortunately. <laughs> there's a lot of bad olive oil. Did not know that. Um, this is one of the better brands out there, California Olive Ranch. Uh, real good stuff. Some of it is actually uh, not even real olive oil. 
you get the real, real cheap stuff and whatever else. Um, you know, this is not a uh, low cost food preparation, okay? You gotta spend some money um, when you wanna eat well. Okay, we're back. A little bit of technical difficulty there. Uh, but if you wanna look in here again, so you can see it's, you still have a little bit of liquid down in there. Not a whole lot, but it's still, you know, with the baking grease, it keeps it from sticking to the bottom. Again, you know, you don't need Teflon, you don't need some non-stick pan if you know how to cook, okay? Um, so, we're just trying to get these onions to soften up a little bit. You want to look in here at the coconut oil. You can see it's it's starting to, you know, liquefy. We're not anywhere even close to the proper temperature yet. And this, this is the trick. Back up a little bit. This is the trick here. Um, trying to figure out the timing of this whole thing because you have to make it so that this isn't done 10 minutes before the fries are done. So you might have to adjust your heat here a little bit while this is being done. Because these, these take, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes once the oil is up to temperature and you actually put the fries in. Um, takes a little bit of time, but it's this is the challenge of this meal because you have to actually get your timing just right. So, you gotta shake it up. Yeah, as long as the cap's on. Cap off, then things get really exciting. Okay, now we are ready. Here, what we're gonna be doing, we're going to open up the secret, top secret spice uh, cabinet, whatever you wanna call it. Watch your head. Does up. everybody have a proper security clearance? I don't know. Maybe. Oh boy. If you're not properly uh, uh, cleared, ministry cleared, yeah, there you go. Then you're not allowed to look at this next part. Okay. Um, this is top secret stuff. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to get some different spices out of here. I'm Been here a little bit closer. I'm First, we have smoked paprika. Very good. Very kind of a smoky flavor. We don't have, we used up our turmeric from up top there, but we have turmeric root powder. This is a superfood. Tremendous, tremendous stuff. Okay, don't get it on your hands unless you want your hands to be yellow for about a week. Um, really, really good stuff. You combine this with black pepper and it creates basically a very powerful antidepressant. Um, curcumin and, and things, you know, again, can't get into a whole lot of that, but. Uh, Right there you go, real good stuff together, which we'll be using. Um, then you have uh, garlic powder, right there. And hold on son, hold on. And you have uh, some chili powder. It, it, Oliver, let go for a minute please. Let me make sure I get, oh, there you go. Chili okay. powder. Um, you can also use, I have a little bit of cayenne pepper up here, which is, uh, Cayenne red pepper. From back when we lived in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Okay, uh, cayenne pepper is another really, really good um, spice. Extremely healthy for you. Um, I don't really put a lot of that in because certain uh, individuals here don't like real spicy food. We won't mention any names, Oliver. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so we're still we're at about not quite 250 degrees in there. Okay. Um, so what we want to do now, got to get some more liquid in here. Take, okay, take, okay, shaky boy. Take the lid off. Now you want to put some olive oil in. I think that good. Okay. Put the lid on it and put it away. Then we don't need to be dead. Yeah. And then what you want to do is, come on in here. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to provide any kind of measurements, but you'll just have to look. I don't do things by measurements, I just kind of eyeball it. You want to take some garlic, and just kind of sprinkle it over the top of it like that. Get some good garlic in there. Um, no. Son, please watch yourself. Chili, chili powder, you don't want to put a whole lot in, so I'll just use the sprinkler top here for it. Just a little tiny bit like that. Not a whole lot. Don't want to get it too spicy. And um, some black pepper. Put the garlic away. Black pepper. I don't really use any herbs in this recipe. A little bit of black pepper in there. 
Now it's some turmeric. Now these are the two bigger ones. I use more turmeric and uh, smoked paprika. As Gretchen was going crazy, she smells meat. Gretchen always goes crazy when she smells meat. Again, you want to put a good amount of that on there. And I saw somebody commented that, you know, a poor dog, is she hungry or whatever else? You can feed her the biggest meal in the world and she's, she still bakes for food. Yes, she okay. does. And she doesn't even always finish the meals we give her, so we feed her plenty of food, believe you me. Now we put on the smoked paprika. Okay, this is the one that you really want a lot of because this is, this is good. I'm going to use a lot. I take the whole thing off. So this one here, I put a, put a pretty good amount on that. Like that. Again, you know, a lot of people, if they want to make barbecue chicken, they're going to get barbecue sauce or whatever else, and the stuff's got high fructose corn syrup in it mm -hmm. and other garbage and whatever, and uh, you don't need it. So now we got that on there. Now you want to just stir it all together, and this is all going to turn into a nice kind of a orange-red collar as it continues to cook together, and it will come out real nice and moist and just tastes really good. And again, you, you don't want it to burn on the bottom like that, so you want to kind of scrape it a little bit like that. I'm actually going to take my temperature down to about 5 because most of the cooking, you want to keep it up about 6 to 7 just to kind of sear the chicken and get it that nice brown collar, a little bit of brown on it, the golden brown collar. And see, I'm kind of getting a little bit too fast here. This is going to get done way before my french fries, so I'm going to take the temperature way down and just kind of let it slow cook. We'll take it down to about two there. And I'm just going to kind of let this cook a little bit slower. Might have to shut the heat off altogether because it's this is not real far from being done. And it's at this point that I can actually add some salt. And what we do there is is uh, we just have it in a jar. We, we get it in bulk and things and um, what we'll do is we actually just use our hands, my, wash my hands before I cooked. We just take a pinch of salt like that and most of this will dissolve. It's not going to be ultra, ultra salty or anything, but it'll dissolve and there you go. And that's about it. Oh, you're going to put it on. Right, go ahead. Thank you little helper there. Okay, and we are, if you can see, look in there. See, it's at 375 right there. Do not touch the oil at this point in time. It is really hot. So, okay, this is when it starts to go to kind of the smoke level here. And now you take your fries like this. Keep your hand back so you don't get burned and just tip it right in there like that. And do not make sure you don't have any water in your, in your bowl because water and hot grease do not mix. And then you take your big spoon thing like that and you just kind of want to get in there. Don't hold it above the thing so I don't want any, any steam getting on it. But you just kind of stir it around. You want to keep your hand off to the side because right above it that steam is really hot. 375 degrees is a bit warm. And then that's going to cook for a couple minutes. Keep stirring these around. You can see again, see how it's all blending together and creating kind of a nice sauce. See? Really, really, really tasty. And uh, that olive oil kind of gets in there and kind of infuses all those spices together. Makes a really, really nice sauce. And the chicken's real nice and tender and just really comes out good. We really love it. So we'll be back when the french fries are done. All right, here we have Gretchen the Wonder Dog. We are crate training her right now. She, of course, gets around in the house and everything else, and we take her for plenty of exercise, but we're training her to, when she's bad, you say, go lay down. So she goes into her crate for a little while, and um, but she sees something in my hands that she desperately wants. She loves, loves, loves raw carrots. Her eyes are glowing. It's really wild. Okay, there you go. There's your carrot. She loves to eat raw carrots. Yes. So you're gonna, now you're not going to eat it. Now you're just going to sniff it and stuff. Yes, it's a go, what go. Yeah, she loves carrots. So she's doing just fine. She's growing like a weed. That's her go, go. 
She's what, six months old now? She will be six months on the 23rd. She'll be six months old on the 23rd. A couple days from now, she'll be six months old. So she loves carrots. Kind of. Yep. Well, it looks like the carrot's just about done. <laughs> so, I want to show you here the coconut oil that we use. This is the stuff here. It's wild, the organic um, centrifuge extracted coconut oil, virgin unrefined, wild light taste, or mild, well, not wild, oh boy, mild light taste. And um, expensive? Yeah, this is expensive to fry things in. But again, you got to remember, initial cost of this is going to be, I think, right around 40 or $50. And you say, wow, that's a lot of money. Yeah, but then you use it for months on end. So you factor in like McDonald's french fries or something like that, where you're spending, you're not, you know, what, 2 or $3 or something on french fries? Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Um, mm -hmm. We've gone to fast food in many years. But you're spending that over the course of how many days, how many weeks, you know, whatever. Uh, you're really not saving any money and you're definitely destroying your health. So we tried, um, what was the type of oil that we, that we got? Safflower, I think. Safflower oil. But there's some issues there. Um, but definitely you want to avoid peanut oil, uh, oil oil. You want to avoid all that different stuff there. There's a lot of GMO type of things and not real good. Um, we did try frying a little bit with olive oil, but again, extremely expensive. I think probably even a little bit more expensive than coconut oil. Um, and the flavor is just not really all that good. Coconut oil, uh, the food comes out great. Um, it's the this is another one of the superfoods out there. It's got multiple health benefits and things. It's upset their carrots going. Uh, so coconut oil French fries are tremendous. Um, really, really good. So if you want to come over here, we'll check on our fries. You can look down in there. Um, and it's important to keep these things stirred. When they get done, you can see they're, they're getting there. Some of them got a little bit darker because they were down on the bottom. That's why you got to keep it stirred. Um, you know, but uh, when they get done, they'll, they'll float, is how you can know that they're done. And again, you know, um, a lot of people would say, we well, got to have a special fry making machine and whatever. No, you don't. No, you don't. Um, I learned this technique from my grandfather. Um, on my mother's side, um, he would actually, Bernard Fry was his name, he would actually, ironic his last name was Fry, I know, I know, somebody's going to put that in the comments, but he would actually cut up potatoes the exact same way I did, and he would just use a stock pot, put some oil in it, fry the, make his fries. Fry making fries, I know, I know. It's really good jokes here, but... But he would make his french fries that way, and uh, I remember that, so to get all this fancy deep frying thing and whatever else, you don't need it, you really don't. Um, and the thing that's nice about it is when you take these french fries out, you'll get some oil with them. Some people would probably pat them off with a paper towel or whatever. I don't bother because coconut oil is good for you, so you don't have to even worry about that. But these, the chicken is done completely, I just have it just to keep it enough you know, warmth in it that it doesn't get cold. And again, you can do that. The fries are a little bit more, um, it's more important to get it exactly done. You can't really let them in there because they'll just get really greasy if you leave them in too long. So we'll be right back when the fries are done. All right, looks like the fries are done. I'm going to shut the heat off back there. So the shut this burner off here too. Do you want to give me the plate, Oliver? This is my dough. Yep, well come on, give it to me. This is gonna be oh this is gonna be your plate? No, this isn't gonna be your your plate because I gotta demonstrate some stuff on it. You don't like cheese. So what we do here, just kind of pull it up, come in here. Watch out, sweetie. Watch out, Oliver. You just wanna kinda of hold them to the side like that, let the oil drain off as much as possible. Put some there on there, they look good. And drain a little bit of the oil off of there. There we go, there's the fries. I'll get back to the rest here in just a minute. And then you want to take some of the barbecue chicken with onions, put it in there. Oh man, I messed up the plate. Now it doesn't look like a showroom type of thing, or not showroom, but what well, you know what I mean. Like that. There you go. 
Then what we like to do, except for Oliver, he's not too big on this, we like to take a little bit of orange cheddar and just go ahead and grate some for on top of the fries. Like that. Just kind of move it around a little bit. And there you go. Right there. Yep. Here we are just suffering away. Another meal. <laughs> terrible. You're getting through it? I think so. Yeah. It's terrible, isn't it? I'll, I'm taking one for the team, Dad. Don't worry. I should show this. What you want when you go for this, this kind of chicken is it should just peel apart like that. Okay, it's it's done on the inside. It's not uh, red or anything there. It's not raw, but you don't want it to be really overcooked and, and overdone. You just want it to be nice and to just come right apart with your fork like that. Just nice and soft. And the fries are they're not hard, but they're not gummy either. You know they're just. Uh, you know, they're not the real, there's crispiness on the edges of them and things, but they're not just, you know, rock hard or anything, is what you want to go for. And another thing I want to say too, you say, well, this looks awfully fattening. Well, first of all, you got to understand the thing about coconut oil. It's a different type of fat than a lot of other, you know, fats. And I forget the whole medium chain triglycerides and whatever else, but it's, it actually um, will help you to lose weight. Actually, it, it uh, triggers parts of your body that will actually help you to, to lose weight and um, there's a, a saying eat fat to lose fat and again that's another thing here you know you say it looks really fattening and whatever else well um, you get your body used to eating fats and you actually do a lot better with losing weight and, and uh, your brain needs fat and a lot of people that go with low fat diets they end up having all kinds of problems um, with low fat food because low fat food has got a lot of powdered cellulose in it. You can look at the ingredients, you'll see it. A lot of your Weight Watchers and things like that, they'll have powdered cellulose. Well, that's sawdust, okay? <laughs> Basically plant fiber, they say. It's sawdust. And they put that in there as filler to make you feel full. And uh, your body, this is what your body's actually craving right here. And if you get into the ketogenic diet, again, you're gonna see it's a lot of high animal fat and you actually lose tremendous amounts of weight with that. So, uh, just wanted to show this. This is another one of our favorite meals. Um, really, really good. And uh, I wish you could just be here to taste it and whatever else. <laughs> but I realize all I'm doing it right now is just probably torturing people with showing this food. Um, but we'll think about you while we're eating, okay? So. <laughs> That's going to be it, and we'll see you in the next video.